Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in our series where we are looking at the Book of Enoch. Now, if you're new to the series, I'm not gonna go through my normal spiel because I wanna get started, but if you're new to the series, please go back and start at the beginning and work your way through because this is all one argument built on top of one another and you, this video is like 85% of the way through the series. So please stop and go back and start at the beginning. But for the rest of you, we are continuing this series where we look at the Book of Enoch. And specifically right now, I'm looking at how the Book of Enoch talked about Jesus and how it's very clear that the apostles were drawing from the Book of Enoch when they were teaching about Jesus. And so this next passage I want to look at is really, really important because the Book of Enoch said things about Jesus that the apostles and Jesus himself were teaching and yet we don't find those things anywhere else in our Old Testaments. They were teaching things about his nature, about who he is, that have become crucial parts of the message of the New Testament. But again, we don't really see those things clearly taught in our Old Testament. Now, if you'll remember from very early on in the series, I talked about how the canon of scripture for the Old Testament was put together by the rabbinical Jews well after Jesus. Okay, the canon of scripture is the books chosen for the Bible. And the books that were chosen for the Old Testament were put together by rabbinical Judaism, specifically a guy named Rabbi Akiva. And this was about a hundred years after Jesus. These were the people who rejected Jesus. They rejected what Jesus and the apostles were teaching. They hated Christianity and they wanted to stop the spread of Christianity more than anything else. And these are the guys who put together the Old Testament and decided what books to include and what books not to include. And the reason that's so important is because the early church, the apostles, the Christians, they were drawing from the book of Enoch very heavily when they were teaching about Jesus and who he is and how he fulfilled the things that were written about him. They were drawing from the book of Enoch. And they were bringing very convincing arguments saying, look, this is who scripture says the Messiah will be. Look, it's Jesus. He proved it by raising from the dead. And then they were teaching about his divinity, his character, his nature. And they were drawing from the book of Enoch. And so Rabbi Akiva and these rabbinical Jews, if they basically were backed into a corner because if they were going to recognize that the book of Enoch was truly scripture, then they really were being forced to recognize that Jesus fulfilled what it said. So what they ended up doing is they removed the book of Enoch from scripture. They no longer considered it to be authoritative in any way, shape or form. And that discredited all of the arguments of the early church and the early Christians and the apostles and Jesus himself. And the problem is that a few hundred years later, the Christian church decided to use Rabbi Akiva's canon of scripture as our Old Testament. And so we don't have the book of Enoch in our scriptures either. This is all just man's tradition building on man's tradition. We read the Bible and we think that this, these are the books that God said are scripture and he didn't include other books. And yet these are actually the books that the people who rejected Jesus and were trying to prove that he is not the Messiah, they said these are scripture and the others are not. So it's the exact opposite of what we believe, and yet it's what we've been taught, and it's what man's tradition continues to hold to this day. So that's the historical context behind the book of Enoch and what it has to say about Jesus. And it's really important when we look at this passage we're going to look at in this video, because a lot of people read the New Testament in light of the Old Testament. They don't read the book of Enoch, and they say, 
I don't understand where the apostles were getting this from. Everything they said about Jesus, it's not backed up by the Old Testament. And I've seen this in two forms. One of which is, for example, I've got a friend I grew up with my entire life, and somewhere in our 20s, he decided he is no longer going to be a Christian, and he is now a total professing atheist. Now, he and I have had a lot of back and forth conversations, and one of the things he puts forward is this idea that, look, when he, when he reads the New Testament, he reads what the apostles say about Jesus, he's like, guys, there is nowhere in scripture where they're getting this idea that Jesus is who they say he is. They say, oh, he was with God in the beginning, and he was the firstborn of all creation, and and all these things where they're ascribing this eternal nature to Jesus. And he's like, where are they getting that from? He says, it seems to me like that was made up after the fact. It seems to me that that is something that was added in later that didn't exist at the time, and it's not what the Jewish people were expecting. And so to him, it, it builds as evidence that this was something that they conjured up themselves after the fact. How many of us have been treated to the TV show? It's always around Easter or Christmas. You know, the TV show, the magazine on the impel shelf at the grocery store, you know, where it says, you know, the Christ of faith versus the Jesus of history, you know, trying to drive a wedge between these two things and how the New Testament writers, you know, the, all this theology about the deity of Christ and pre-existence and messiahship. And this is all invented by the church later and thrown back into the New Testament. Well, yeah, except for books like Enoch that have all that stuff in it a couple hundred years before Jesus showed up. <laughs> you know? So it, it's a really good example of how Jews were thinking about Messiah prior to Jesus. So that's one example of why this is so important. The other example of why it's so important is if you look up online Jewish rabbinical Judaism responses and arguments against Christianity, this is one of the things they talk about. They say, no, we don't believe that the Messiah was going to be divine, that he's going to have God's nature, that he's the son of God, or that he's pre-existing, or blah, 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 all those things that the Christian church believes. We don't teach that in the Old Testament. It's not, it's not biblical. Where are you guys getting that from? You've made that up. It's not something that was ever taught prior to the Christian church. And the fact is they're wrong. They are wrong because as Jesus said to the Sadducees, you are wrong because you don't know the scriptures. And in the first video I showed that when he said that he was talking about the book of Enoch because the book of Enoch came definitively before Jesus and the apostles and the early church. It is an ancient Jewish text. It's an ancient Jewish text that at the time of Jesus and the apostles was viewed as scripture by many Jewish people. And they were teaching from it and they were referencing it. And it does say these things about the Messiah. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So I'm going to open up to Enoch chapter 48, and I'm going to read what it has to say and compare that to what the New Testament teaches about who Jesus is. Because quite frankly, guys, this is incredible. I love this. So again, I am reading now from the book of Enoch. This book predates Jesus. Okay? We have copies of this book that predate Jesus. We know this predates him. We know this predates everything the apostles were teaching about the Messiah. Keep that in mind. If this predates what they were saying and it says the same thing, they probably were drawing from this. And if they were drawing from this, that's really important for us to understand and look at and understand where they were getting these ideas from. Okay, without further ado, 1st Enoch chapter 48, starting in verse 2. And at that hour, that son of man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits, and his name before the head of days. Yea, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. 
He will be a staff to the righteous on which to stay themselves and not fall. And he will be the light of the Gentiles and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. All who dwell on earth will fall down and worship before him and will praise and bless and celebrate with song the Lord of Spirits. And for this reason has he been chosen and hidden before him before the creation of the world and forevermore. And the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits has revealed him to the holy and righteous, for he has preserved the lot of the righteous, because they have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness, and have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits. For in his name they are saved, and according to his good pleasure has it been in regard to their life. Guys, that is such an incredible description of who this anointed one is. And even in this chapter, at the end of this chapter, he does refer to that one as the anointed, which in Greek is the word Christ. So that is who he's talking about. He's talking about the Christ, the Messiah, the one that they're waiting for. And he says, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. He says, he has been chosen and hidden before him before the creation of the world and forevermore. The book of Enoch, which was written long before Jesus, said the Messiah predates creation. Before the sun, before the stars, before the creation of the world, his name was named. He was there and he was hidden with God. Not only that, but Enoch is saying that he himself saw him, okay? So he, he was actually there at the time of Enoch, and Enoch is saying he's been there since before creation. So this is not something the apostles made up. This is not something that was new when the church came along and started saying this about Jesus. This is a concept about the Messiah that existed long before Jesus. And if the apostles are saying the same exact thing, then it's because they're drawing from this. They're drawing from this book, which we've already shown in this series. They were definitely drawing from this book in other ways. And here we see Enoch describing the Messiah in this particular way. So now let's look at what the apostles have to say and compare it to what Enoch said. So this is what the apostles have to say about Jesus and what the early church was teaching about Jesus and what some people today say, oh, this didn't exist prior to Jesus and prior to the early church. They're the first ones who said it. We've just seen that Enoch said it, and this definitely came prior to Jesus and prior to the early church. So now let's compare it to what the apostles and Jesus themselves were saying. In Colossians 1, Paul says, the Son is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. In him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, all thrones, authorities, lords and rulers, all things were created through Christ and for Christ. He was there before anything was made and all things continue because of him. He is the head of the body, which is the church. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead. So, in all things, Jesus has supremacy. God was pleased for all of his fullness to live in him. And through him, God has reconciled all things to himself. Things on earth and things in heaven. So, Look at the comparison. Look at what Enoch had to say about the coming Messiah. And look at what Paul was saying about Jesus. Okay, Enoch said, Before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were named, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. He's been chosen and hidden before him before the creation of the world and forevermore. Okay, and Paul said, He is the firstborn of all creation. In him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, all thrones, authorities, lords, and rulers. 
All things were created through Christ and for Christ. He was there before anything was made, and all things continue because of him. If you don't have the book of Enoch, if you're not reading that book, then you have to read the New Testament and assume that this is something that the apostles were taught separate from Scripture. Because the Old Testament that we have doesn't say these things. And again, the reason the Old Testament doesn't say these things is because the Old Testament we have was compiled by a guy who was trying to prove that this isn't true. So he left out the parts that do say these things. Look at how incredible this is, this comparison between Enoch and what Paul said. If we know that the book of Enoch came first, what was said there came first, and then Paul came along and he's saying the same thing, where do you think he was drawing from? Was this something that Paul just got out of inspiration that he was taught through the Holy Spirit that had never been revealed before? It doesn't seem like it because Enoch said the same thing. Maybe Paul was explaining to people, look, we were told who the Messiah is. We were told ahead of time the Messiah is someone who existed before the creation of the world. And now we know it's Jesus. Look at who he is and understand who he is. Let's keep looking at some of the things the apostles said. Let's look at John chapter 1. My friend, the atheist that I mentioned earlier in this video, he told me at one point, he was like, it seems like the concept of Jesus being divine or, or pre-existing creation, all of the, that whole concept, it seems like that didn't exist until John wrote his gospel because the other gospels don't really say it all that clearly, which he's wrong about. But that's, that was his view. The other Gospels didn't really say, and it seems like John made that up later on to try to reinforce an opinion. And it seems like that idea didn't exist. Okay, well, we just saw what the book of Enoch says. We saw that that's also what Paul was teaching. So now let's look at what John said in his Gospel. He said, In the beginning there was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and nothing came to be without him. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own, but his own people did not receive him. The word became flesh and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only Son of the Father. So there we have yet another place in the New Testament where it's saying Jesus was with God in the beginning and he was God. Everything was created through him. He was there before creation. And yet we can see in the book of Enoch, this isn't something that John made up after the fact that John came along and he's like, oh, I want to, I want you guys to see Jesus as this divine entity. So I'm going to start writing about it. Like, like, no, no, no. Like I know most of my viewers probably don't think that, but I just like, let's see where he's getting this from. The book of Enoch said this about Jesus and this book, this book of Enoch was written even by the scholars who don't give it full credit. Even they acknowledge it predates Jesus by at least a couple hundred years. Simply because we've got the manuscripts, we can't deny it. So this is not an idea that the apostles were the first ones to teach. This is an idea that the book of Enoch was teaching long before the Christian age. Let's look at a couple things Jesus said about himself. Shortly before Jesus died, he was praying and he said, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence. Give me the glory I had with you before the world was made. Father, I want these people that you gave me to be with me where I am so that they may see my glory, which you gave me because you loved me before the creation of the world. So once again, we've got Jesus attesting to the fact that he was there before the creation of the world and all of the world was created through him. We've got John saying it. We've got Paul saying it. And before any of them said it, Enoch said it. 
So not only is this passage in the Book of Enoch really cool to read, and other passages like it, I really love reading what Enoch has to say about Jesus, but even beyond that, for us Christians, let's recognize the fact that these truths about Jesus were told to us prior to Jesus and the apostles in the Christian age. The book of Enoch said these things before that. So when Paul and John and even Jesus are saying these things about who Jesus is, we need to understand that there is a text that exists that said these things about Jesus beforehand. Now, you could argue, well, Jesus said that about himself, and that's where John and Paul got it from. Sure, okay, maybe. But I still ask you, well, then how did Enoch get it right if Enoch isn't Scripture? If Enoch isn't Scripture, how did this book accurately talk about who the Messiah is ahead of time when our Old Testament doesn't say any of these things about Jesus? It doesn't say it. Go look at it. Look for these things in Scripture. At the very best, you have to really read into things in order to see it. And that was done on purpose. Because these texts, like the book of Enoch, these were left out on purpose after the fact. We, I just, I can't get over the fact that the book of Enoch says that the Messiah predates creation and Enoch himself saw him with his own eyes. Think about that. Guys, this is so rich for us to read and understand and realize that there are truths in here that flow throughout the New Testament. The New Testament is teaching the same thing the book of Enoch said ahead of time. This is a book we should be reading and learning from. Enoch himself saw Jesus and talked about him. He was the first one to write down, yeah, there is an anointed one. He's coming someday. Right now he's hidden, but he existed before the sun and the stars were made. He existed before the creation of the world. And he was chosen by God to be his anointed one through whom everyone can be saved. Enoch said these things ahead of time about the Messiah. And if we understand these things that Enoch said, then an atheist friend coming along saying, oh, they made these things up after the fact, we can be like, no. But we got to overcome our human traditions that tell us this book isn't scripture. Because as long as we don't consider this book scripture and we don't read it, quite frankly, we don't have a good argument for these people who are saying that the apostles made it up. We're only hurting ourselves when we don't read the texts that predate Jesus that were considered to be scripture by Jesus and the apostles. We are only hurting ourselves because these things are witnesses that talk about Jesus and talk about who he is. In John chapter 5, Jesus said, The Father himself who sent me has given testimony about me. What is that testimony? He says, you carefully study the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. They do, in fact, testify about me, but you refuse to come to me to have that life. So Jesus is saying the scriptures testify about me. Well, then just a little bit later, Jesus says, I tell you the truth before Abraham was even born. I am. Jesus is saying I pre-existed. I existed before Abraham. And the scriptures testify about me. And yet the only place in scripture that says this about Jesus is in the book of Enoch. It's not in our Old Testament. When the apostles said what they had to say about Jesus and they were teaching about him, calling him the firstborn of all creation, saying that he was there before the foundation of the world. When they said these things, they were drawing from the book of Enoch because the book of Enoch said this about Jesus first. And it said this about Jesus a long time before Jesus actually came. Guys, we are missing out on a treasure treasure 
when we don't read the book of Enoch. Just look at this incredibly beautiful description of who Jesus is, of his nature, of the fact that he predates creation. He was there. Why are we not reading this book? The only reason we actually have, if you learn history, the only reason we actually have is because the people who hated Jesus told us not to. They said, stop reading that book. These are the people who rejected him. The people he said, you have rejected the word of God for the sake of your own traditions. They then made a new tradition. Don't read the book of Enoch. And we're following them. If we understand history and we understand where the canon of scripture came from, we understand that those are the people we're following. And that is why we don't have a good answer when our atheist friends come and say that the apostles were the ones who made up these things about Jesus. They clearly didn't. The book of Enoch said these things a long time before they came along. But we don't know that because we don't read it. We need to start recognizing that Jesus and the apostles were teaching from and drawing from the book of Enoch. And they were merely expounding on the things that were already taught in what they considered to be scripture. And we are only doing ourselves a disservice and missing out when we don't read these things. And at worst, we're corrupting our view of scripture and we're not arriving at a knowledge of the truth because we're not reading all of scripture. As Jesus told the Sadducees, you are deceived because you don't know the scriptures. And then he referenced the book of Enoch. This was such a valuable passage that I wanted to spend a one video focusing on this passage, but there is more. So in the next video, I'm going to continue looking at things that the book of Enoch had to say about the coming Messiah. So we can see the parallels and see how the apostles were clearly drawing from this book when they wrote the things that they wrote in our New Testament. So please join me in the next video as we continue going through this book.